guys, Raptor Squad member JP Carnotaur here, and in today's review, we're going to be taking a look at this. This is the Lost World Jurassic Park Ground Tracker from Kenner's 1997 Lost World toy line, and this is a really nice vehicle, and I'm happy to be showing it to you guys. So let's start this review by taking a closer look at the vehicle itself. So taking a closer look at the vehicle itself, you can see that it's a very bright lime green color which wouldn't blend in unlike the one from the film that was a very dark green like a forest green type of color it also has these black camouflage spots on the vehicle the headlights are made of sticker so is the grill and it also has the lost world jurassic park logo on the hood now the hood is part of the action feature that's activated by the winch and we'll talk about that in just a few minutes but you can see i can take the hood off nothing on the bottom there and the sticker of the Lost World Jurassic Park logo is on the top and we got the grill. They did sculpt an engine inside. You can see it's been beaten up. It kind of looks like there's a bite mark taken out of it. And then there's two pieces of chip paint there. Continuing down the rest of the vehicle, you can see that the tires are actually made of a hard plastic, not a rubber. The windshield there really isn't that much detail. They did sculpt some windshield wipers on there, so that's pretty cool. They added a side skirt, and there's a peg on there. We'll talk about what that's for in just a few minutes. They sculpted the door. They didn't add any sticker or any piece of plastic to make that look more realistic with the rear view mirror, like an actual mirror on the side, but they did sculpt that in. The windshield is made out of a hard plastic, not a piece of glass. The inside of the vehicle is very basic. You can see that it does have a steering wheel and it spins, but it doesn't do anything to the front tires. And they did sculpt in two gauges, but they didn't even add stickers there. There is something sculpted in there. Maybe that's air conditioning, I'm unsure. And the seats are pretty basic. On the lights, you can see the Lost World Jurassic Park logo and a little arrow that points to rescue. The lights aren't really that detailed. There are some, I guess, air vents there. I'm not sure what that's for. And on the back of the vehicle, you can see that it has a little tray here with some wires running through it and a fan. And this opens up to reveal a satellite dish. And on the bottom there, it has the same detail as the actual bottom piece of this tray. You can also see that it has a little crane on the back, and we'll talk about that action feature. But before we do that, you can see it has some stickers on there. It has a gauge, uh, and it says overload. And on the actual part of the crane up here, it has a warning label. I just pass around to show you guys. And that's pretty cool. And finally, on the back of the vehicle, we have stickers for the taillights. So as far as the action feature and the playability of this vehicle goes, I have some human figures here, and you can see that I can fit Ian Malcolm in the driver's seat. I got Carter, and he can fit in the passenger seat. So you can fit two humans inside the actual vehicle itself. Now you'll see on the side skirt there, it has like a little peg and each human figure has pegs on their feet. So I have Eddie Carr here and I can just put him down on that peg and he will stand there. Another cool feature is the missile launcher. Now, if I pull this out, you can see that the missile launcher will open up and it's on a crane so it goes pretty high. And I got Nick Van Owen here and I can stick him up on the peg on that lower it a little bit so it stands and you can see that I could stick a human figure up there and we also got Dieter Stark and we can lay him on this tray or we can put him on this peg hole there so you can see that this vehicle actually fits about five figures here but you can even fit about two more one to put there and one in the back so the action features on this vehicle are pretty good I do like them and it does have a lot of them and the first one is activated by pressing down on that yellow button here. Let's say I got my Pachycephalosaurus ram head, goes right into it, and you can see the hood flies off. Now, the hood is pushed off by this little yellow button there, and that reveals the engine, and it's spring-loaded. All you gotta do is press it back down. You can see that it'll shoot back up. But all you do to put the hood back on is, again, press the little yellow button down, and the hood slides right on. Now a piece of dino damage that this set comes with is the windshield. Now this one is a pain to take off as you can see here. 
it doesn't really want to come off. But I finally got it. You can see that the windshield is on these two pegs and they stick right back in there on those pegs. Now this is cool because as we know, this vehicle was completely destroyed by the two parent T-Rexes in the Lost World. And sometimes you can have your other carnivores come in and bite down on it and rip it apart. So that's pretty cool. And this goes right back on a lot easier than it is to take off by just pressing down there. Now, a really cool thing about the Lost World vehicles is a lot of them had light up action features, unlike the Jurassic Park ones. And you can see here that there's a switch in the back and it actually lights these two lights up. So that's pretty cool. The switch is located right here. Now, whether or not this is part of dino damage or not, this piece actually comes out. So you could say this is part dyno damage, but it's also removable so you can access the battery pack and it's right there. And I don't want to keep these lights on forever because it might die down the battery. So just close the switch and I can put it right back in. Now the final two is another dyno damage piece here. You can see I have my satellite that pops out on this little tray and uh oh falls off, carnivore ripped it off, or a stegosaurus hit it with its tail, or whatever your imagination is, and you can see that both this satellite or fan piece comes off of this tray. And you can see here, you just snap it back in, it lays down, push it right back into the holes, and it clicks. The final action feature is the machine gun on the crane, and you can stick one of your human figures on there, but for some reason, mine is very bad at balancing. As you can see here, it's very floppy, so I'm not gonna stick anyone on there right now. But to show you guys, you can spin the crane in a 360, and you can fire wherever you pretty much want. There's a little yellow button here on the machine gun, and I just point it wherever I want it to shoot and fire. So, the machine gun also comes with three bullets. You can see here that I have these two missiles hiding away in that little spot on the back of the vehicle. And when I'm done with the launcher, I just pull it back and put it right back in to its spot. Now, in terms of size, I have my tape measure here. And the vehicle itself is about a foot long. It's about five inches in width with the crane extended all the way to its maximum height, the vehicle reaches at about 10 inches tall. So it's actually pretty big and it scales up nicely with some of your dinosaur figures and your human figures. Now obviously, a man this size would not be driving a vehicle this big. It would be a lot smaller in a sense, but in order to fit all your human figures, it has to be this size. So here it is compared to a Lost World human figure. We got Dieter Stark there. And like I said, they're kind of out of scale. And if I pull him out of there, we have from the Lost World, the Stegosaurus. And those two actually scale really nicely. If you guys have seen our Kenner intro, you'll see that in that one commercial, it showed the ground tracker firing at the Stegosaurus. So that's actually pretty cool. So taking this guy out of there, we have our Pachycephalosaurus ram head. And these two don't really scale up. I mean, the ones in the film were about a quarter of the size of this big guy. But you can see that they are play compatible and they do scale up nicely, I guess. And finally, we have the recently reviewed Bone Breaker Carno. And you can see that comparing the two, they're actually decently scaled together. So I do like the scale here, I think it's accurate. So guys, here was today's look at the Lost World Jurassic Park Ground Tracker. Now this is a really nice vehicle to pick up and if you get any Lost World vehicle, the first one I recommend to you is the Mobile Command Center, but the second one is this one. I have to say that this is the second best Lost World vehicle and they did make a lot of them, but this one is one of my favorites. One, because it's complete and two, because of how cool it is. I mean, with all the action features that it has, it is really nice and if i were you pick this up in the future now they are pretty costly i got this one for around 40 to 50 dollars i want it in a bid and complete ones like this can go for around that price but loose ones in not as good condition can go for about 20 to 30 dollars and mint in box can go for 80 to 100 to maybe even 150 I've seen one go for before so they aren't the cheapest vehicle to get 
but it definitely is worth the price. So my overall rating for this vehicle is a 9 out of 10 because I would have liked it if it looked more like the Mercedes from the film. But other than that, it's really great. So let's know in the comment section down below what you guys think of this vehicle and whether or not you'll be picking it up in the future. So this is Raptor Squad member JP Carnotaurus signing off and I'll see you guys in the next review.